in need. We can start today by giving to one of our special offerings, the Peace and Global Witness Offering. And this month, by bringing in a non-perishable snack item. Save that candy for the ghosts and goblins that are going to come around at the end of the month asking for the treats. I would like to talk about crafty Christians. We could use your help. This is a very important mission, and uh, our church could use your help. All you have to do is come. We supply Band-Aids if you get cut. Uh, all you need to do, uh, we cut out stockings. You follow the lines just like follow the Yellow Brook Road. That's all you have to do. And we give many items to children in Marion County, to hospice, to um, assisted living. And it's a wonderful, wonderful way for you to spread our joy and our mission and our ministry from this church. It doesn't, doesn't take, take much. much. A, a small, small act of kindness can, can make, make a huge impact. impact. Let's help someone today. Thank you. That's a really hard act to follow. <laughs> now, um, let's share the peace with each other. Um, we have, so everyone can feel safe, we have put san hand sanitizer in each of the pews if you would like to do that before you shake hands with anyone. Or you could just fish bump or elbow bump. But let's share the peace of Christ with our fellow congregants. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and say to ourselves, as it is written in the 25th Psalm, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. <clears throat> in you I trust, O my God.
let us read the call to worship responsively. The hand of God rests upon this mountain. We will be a hand for the Lord. The hand of God rests upon the mountain. We will be a stronghold for the world. The hand of God rests upon this mountain. We will be a shelter from the storm. This is our God. We are God's beloved mountain. By God's hand shall this mountain be moved. We are called to confess this day, confess what we have done, confess what we have done this past week, and confess to our Almighty God. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. Universal Sovereign, Universal Prince, Universal Spirit, you provide us spiritual riches in great abundance. You are rightly insulted by our indifference to your invitation to celebrate the union of Christ and the church. We are undesiring of your gracious invitation and often scandalized that you would accept others we consider even less deserving. Forgive the rude treatment that we have given your message and our indifference preparedness when we do heed your invitation. Grant us time to reconsider our priorities, to push aside, and in giving place to your rule to escape the judgment that would otherwise await us. God have mercy on us. Christ have mercy. Holy Spirit, be merciful to us. Amen. Christ lived among the people. He healed them. He gave sight to them. He listened to them, to their stories. He was there for them. And he went to the cross. He died upon that wooden cross with nails in his hand to forgive all of us. And in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven this day. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, starting with the first verse. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation 
and said, tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone with my wrath, so that I may not I may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that you brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. Thus ends the first reading.
The scripture reading for today's gospel comes out of the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. May we listen to the word. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them, the king was in rage. He said his troops destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready. But those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those sleeves went out to the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. The call is out. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son, Picture those invitations that were made, gold-edged, hand-addressed by the royal calligrapher, each carrying the king's own seal. What an honor it would have been to have been on that king's list. Think about it. The big day arrives. I remember a few years back, I won't, go, I won't say how many, that we had invitations for our wedding. We invited, we thought, about 100 people. Well, more than that showed up. They loved us within the church, within two churches, within actually three churches. And I addressed wedding invitations. I addressed them in the car because my future husband said, you need to address the invitations, dear. And we were driving from Louisville, Kentucky to Cincinnati, Ohio to see my future husband's parents in Cincinnati. And he says, you need to address those envelopes so they're on time. Yes, dear. I addressed all the envelopes. I mailed them. They were on time. They were not in gold glitter. I did them myself in black ink. But you think about it, the big day arrives for a wedding. What a glorious occasion. And the king expects his palace to be packed full of people to partake of this great feast that has been prepared. The lights in the kitchen of the palace have been on all night long, cooking all the special food. It is rich food. The smell of that veal cooking and the baking of bread. My house smelled of baking bread even this morning. My husband even said, I think you bet baked bread last night. It still smells the house. 
but the weary night shift has gone home. And the excited day crew has arrived for the next shift. Thousands of bouquets of flowers have been delivered to the palace. The wine has been poured. The candles are lit. And the staff has cleaned the house, mansion. It is spotless. And they're ready to serve. And they open the doors. The trumpets sound. And there's no one there. No one is waiting to get in. No one is waiting to have this great feast and to see a couple get married. And there's a gasp of air. No one is there. Something, something must be terribly wrong. For the invited guests have made light of their invitations. They've thrown them away. They put them in the trash. They put them on the desk where they have unopened stacks of mail. Have you ever had a stack of unopened mail? Especially the advertisements that always go to the trash at our house. No one is planning on attending this great feast. But the banquet is still ready. And God, the host, won't give up until the seats are filled. The new call is out, and everybody has come in. The slaves are sent out to round up anyone they can find, both good and bad. This somewhat has become come as you are, banquet. There's no entrance requirement. Now you don't have to have an invitation. What a diverse list ends up in God's guest book. Business executives are now seated next to street people. Inmates serve the same feast as judges. They're all breaking bread with neighbors. Grease and crust hands brushing against well-manicured fingertips at the cake table. As in the parable same call is out among us. Everybody has been invited. God's list continues to be inclusive and diverse. And I always look at this inclusive. We have Presbytery meeting on Tuesday for the Presbytery. The worship bulletin was published. It didn't have anyone participating in worship from this area of Ocala. I thought that was not inclusive. So we got an email. I got a personal email. Would you like to help serve communion? And I said, yes, therefore it'd be somebody representing this area. I got an email back, and and they said, thank you for your concern. God includes all people. This is a come, as you are. But don't stay that way, party. When we are given the wedding garment of new life and fed the bread and wine of God's grace, we are changed people. Clothed in Christ, a whole new life emerges for us. God's love transforms our lives. Even as God sends us out to invite others to this great celebration at God's banquet, there is a place marked for each one of us. 
It has our name tag on it. For the invitation is meant for everyone. The call is out and God's table must be filled. You know, the parable of the wedding party gives us a vision of a joyous and inclusive feast to come. It's also a pattern for our lives in anticipation of that glorious feast. This is what God invites our church to look like. For God invites us to be inclusive and to look alive every time we come together in worship. I'd like to share a story that I found, and it's about Tom. Tom was a bus driver in New York City. He chose to use his intelligence and his talents to be a bus driver. He had a college degree, and he had a master's degree. But yet, he took the job of being a bus driver. Everyone who stepped onto Tom's bus entered a unique little community on wheels traveling the streets of town. He welcomed everybody to come in and, and sit down and share their love and care. Tom was sure of one thing, God's love. God's love for all. His life had not always been easy, but God's love had brought him through many different events. When people unloaded their problems to him, he assured them that they were welcome to the table of his Lord. When people talked about the world's problems, he freely talked about the power of God's love in his life. And when people asked him about his bracelet that he wore that said God's love at all times he took it off and gave it to them it was a reminder that God's actions always demonstrate God's love everyone was welcome in Tom's bus and everyone was welcome to Tom's church when his church was drafting a new mission statement, Tom helped. He often challenged the other church members. He would say, say that in bus language so that my people can understand it. As he drove around town, he told people about his church, about coming to the table that was open. He eagerly invited them to come as if he were inviting them to a great feast which according to this parable it is and on Sundays when the buses didn't run he picked them up in his car to bring them to church he was always going up to the pastor and saying I brought someone new this morning you need to meet her or him I'm introducing them to the church. And then one cold day, a woman got on his bus. She was rather large, and she said, I've been every place to find a winter coat. And no one has one. But I know I'm still accepted by you. So he went to his church and asked, if they'd passed the word. And the following day, a winter coat appeared and was given to Tom. Tom was a present day example of this parable. He was sent out to fill the banquet hall. When we share God's love, through our words and our actions, we are sharing the invitation to God's banquet of grace. 
As St. Francis once said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Somebody heard about Tom's church and said, oh, that's the church where anybody can go and sit at the table. Tom and others made that reality in their church. As they brought people of all races and economic backgrounds to the table to worship. God's banquet is set. It's set for all people. Today is Worldwide Communion Sunday. People from different races, from different backgrounds, from different denominations will come and sit at the table of our Lord. All are invited by God's grace. All are invited to sit at the table. This parable of the wedding is a parable at the table that we are called to set. But it is our heavenly feast that has come to us. May it also be the pattern for our lives. Our lives to be shared by our Savior, Jesus Christ, in all that we do this day. Amen. May we stand and affirm our faith today by reciting the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God. and was made man. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he arose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to uh, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated and like to have the clerk of session come with me, come up here and stand with me at this time. Today we are in celebration also. Yes, it is Worldwide Communion Sunday, but we are also celebrating the ordination and installation of our elders, elders that were voted on you, by you as a congregation. And they will be here for you as you give them support, care, love, and guidance. You know, I look at my own family of course, both my husband and I are teaching elders. My daughter is a ruling elder. My son is a ruling elder. My other son is a ruling elder. My sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and my in-laws were, were and are ruling elders. This part of this installation and ordination 
there's a spot in here that I tear up with. There's a spot that I tell the new elders that are being ordained. You may kneel if you so choose. You don't have to. That part came out of the Cincinnati Presbytery many years ago due to my mother-in-law being in a wheelchair and she could not kneel. And she cried when she saw that in the Book of Order for the first time. There are parts of this Book of Order as we look at those that you all have chosen. They have been called. Called to do God's work in this church. Called to do service for this church and the work of the Lord. At this time, I'd like to ask um, Ken is here, if you would like to stand up. No, you need to stand and face me, not the congregation yet. Uh, Ken, you will be ordained and installed. Mrs. Ambler, you will be installed. John, where's my other one? <laughs> He's coming. He's, no, you're not a Cummings. That's my last name. You have all been called to serve this church. God has called you. That's not an easy call to say yes to. It's not an easy call sometimes to fulfill. But God will give you guidance. He will give you care. And he will give you love. I have some st constitutional questions that I need to ask you out of the book of order. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? I do. do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confession of our church as authoritative and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience of Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by the discipline? Will you be a friend among others on session, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit. Will you be in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the church? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, and love? Will you be a faithful, ruling, teaching elder, watching over the people of this church, providing and helping with their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving on councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ.
Will the congregation please stand? Do we, the members of the church, <coughs> accept Ken, Tara, John, and Warren as ruling elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we? Do we pray for them to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us through Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? Do we? Okay, um, Ken, if you are able, you will. You may kneel for ordination. May have to help get them up. <laughs> <laughs> now, would all ruling and teaching elders from the congregation please come forward for the laying on of hands? Well, someone has to touch Ken up here. Let us pray. As we ordain Ken, O oh Lord, we ordain him to be a ruling elder, guided by you, guided by your presence in his life, listening to your word every day, and listening to do your work, your work, not only in this church, but in the community. Lord God Almighty, as we install our elders today, let them be guided, cared for by this church as they reach out to you in love and care. Love and care for their lives. Love and care for scripture. Love and care on decisions within sessions. You guide each one of us, Lord, and you reach out to all those that listen. We need not be fancy. We're just common people, common people that have been invited to your banquet table. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Ken, can you get up? <laughs> Congratulations.
Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, you work among us. You work out in the community. For this today, O oh Lord, is a day of celebration, a day that we sit at the table of our Lord. Lord, we also ask for your guidance and your peace as we give to this church an offering today. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We do have several prayer requests today uh, for Pamela Parker. She is the niece of Kathy Smith. Um, she is in hospice. And, and John, if I mis mispronounce this for Bob, sure. Um, he comes to the breakfasts and luncheons, and he has visited uh, the Countryside Church. Uh, he survived a jaw cancer. He is um, surviving five years with leukemia, and he has new cancer, and um, he is a friend of the Baines. So um, Pamela Parker, uh, niece in Texas, she entered hospital care after um, battling cancer, and this is uh, by Kathy Smith, and I'm going to, Linda, who's in the hospital? Al Whitford. Al Whitford is in the hospital, Calab Regional, uh, he was taken to the hospital yesterday morning, so uh, prayers go up for them as well. Anyone else that I have left out? May we go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you've taken your large arms and you have put them around this church this day, the Countryside Presbyterian Church, 
You have blessed it. You have shared love and care and kindness with its members today. Lord, you're awesome. You know our every need, even when we wake up in the middle of the night. It's you talking to us. You tell us to do something. And sure enough, it's shared with others. You give us a good night's rest. And Lord, we feel so much better. You were here yesterday at the craft fair. You're sharing good news with others. As you saw people inviting others to come here and worship and be a part of this community. You are walking among us. And sometimes we didn't even know it. But you were here. And you give love and you give thanksgiving for the day. And for all the ones that gave their hours, their volunteer hours of hard work. Lord God, we praise you. You have provided so much and you continue to provide. Provisions have been given. We look out into the world and we see those that are less fortunate than us, those that are hungry, those that need shoes to wear to school, those that have no shelter to call their own, so they live in a tent, those that need your shelter of the living God. Lord God, we lift up those that are in need of prayer. We lift up Bob. We lift up Al. We lift up Pamela. And Lord, we lift up those that have been ill and sick and are back with us today. It's always a joyous occasion. Lord, we also pray for those that are in hospice. Pray for those that are traveling. Traveling back to a foreign country. We pray for those that are second responders and first responders to emergencies never receive enough prayers. We pray for men and women that work in the hospitals, that care for those patients day in and day out. We also pray for the men and women that serve, as well as those that serve in foreign countries. They spread the word, they spread the Bible studies. But Jesus Christ is their Lord and their Savior. Lord God, hear us, hear our hearts this day. We ask for your grace, your grace in all that we do. Hear us now as we unite in prayer, praying the prayer that your son prayed with his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This is an open table in the Presbyterian Church USA. It's all, it is open to all the believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Friends, this is a joyful feast of the people of God, for people will come from east and west and north and south and sit at this table. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and he blessed and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Let us pray. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He opened blind eyes. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. You are a very gracious God. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Remember your church, O Lord, united in the truth of your word and empower it in ministry to the world. Remember the world of nations. By your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Let peace and justice prevail. Remember our family and our friends. Bless them and watch over them. Be gracious to them and give them peace. Remember the sick and the suffering the aged and the dying, encourage them and give them hope this day. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread that was in front of him. He broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this represents the body that will be broken for you, all of us. Do thus in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, the empty cup, and he blessed it. And he poured it. And he said, this represents the blood that will be shed upon Calvary this day. The bread, the cup, the gifts for the people of God. Elders, you may come forward.
come to this table, the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we please stand. Lift up our voices. Rejoice. The Lord is King. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go with you as you leave this sacred place this day. Amen.